Hey everybody, how's it going? It's a Daily Shooter, and ever since the new ammunition regulations took effect in California on July 1st, 2019, I have been inundated with emails, people wanting to share their stories with me, tell me about their headaches, tell me about their nightmares, and the problems they've been having trying to acquire ammunition. I want to share some of those stories with you today. I think you'd be surprised at how bad it really is. This channel is proud to be sponsored by the Firearms Policy Coalition. These guys are out there every single day fighting for our rights, so make sure you go and you check the link in the description box, sign up, become a member, and donate when you can. Now, before we get started, I think it's very important to first understand exactly how serious these stories are. These aren't merely stories of people being denied ammo at the ammo counter. These are stories of people being denied their Second Amendment rights via ammunition regulations. And that's because without ammo, you don't have a working firearm. You might as well have a rock or a paperweight. Ammo is an integral part to a working firearm. So if they're being denied ammunition, they're being denied the use of their firearm. And so again, these are very important stories to pay attention to. They affect normal, average, everyday Joes. They are affecting the people in the military. They are affecting people in law enforcement. Basically, everybody across the board is being affected by this in some way or another. Now, this first story really aggravates me. This is probably the one that gets under my skin the most, and that's because it affects service members in the state of California. I was contacted by a member of the military who is stationed up in Central California. Him and a couple of his military buddies went out to Walmart to try and buy some ammunition, and not only were they denied that ammunition, but they were denied the ability to even conduct a background check. The reason is because the ignorant clerk behind the counter said that they had to have a California ID in order to run the background check. These guys went in with their military IDs, which should have been fine, but still they were denied ammunition because the person behind the counter didn't know what was going on. Now, before I answered his question, I wanted to make sure I got some clarification. So I texted Brandon over at the Firearms Policy Coalition, who sent me a section of the law which pertains to that. So I wanna read that to you guys real quick. If you're in the military, pay attention. Section C, the ammunition vendor shall collect the ammunition purchasers or transferees name, date of birth, current address, gender, hair color, eye color, height, weight, and driver's license or other government identification number in the manner described in penal code section 28180. So you can have a military ID or other government ID. And the reason that that is in there is because if you have, let's say you have a California ID, but it says federal limit supply, or you don't have a California ID, you're gonna have to come up with some other type of federally recognized ID. For instance, you can have a federal limit supply ID, but you're gonna have to bring something else like a passport or other federal ID to show them in conjunction with your ID to go through the background check. But if somebody shows up with their military ID, they shouldn't be denied. They should be allowed to go through and get their ammunition. So here we have guys that they stood in line. They decided to volunteer for something bigger than themselves. They decided to stand up and basically risk everything for our country, for the freedoms that we all enjoy. And here they are being denied their basic Second Amendment rights. These are guys who will put a gun in their hands and we'll send them off to war. But at the same time, we won't even let them buy a box of 22 at Walmart. This is absolutely ridiculous. And this is the one story that really pisses me off. Now, you guys are really going to enjoy this next story, not because it's a positive story, but because there's actual video footage of what happened. There is another guy here on YouTube. He lives in the state of California, and on his YouTube channel, he went ahead and posted his experience with being denied ammunition. Now, he is in that same boat that I just spoke of. He has a uh, license that says federal limit supply. He was aware of exactly what he needed before he walked into the store, so he brought his passport along with him. He had his federal limit supply ID, and he had a valid passport but he was still denied because the person behind the counter again ignorant of the law said that his passport wouldn't work he said it's not considered a valid ID well your passport is a government issued ID it's got your name your address it's got a photo on it you know it's got a date I mean the, everything that you would need to be a valid ID issued by the federal government is going to be in your passport so this guy brought that with him and he was denied ammunition again he was even denied the ability to conduct a background check just like the uh, service members that we spoke of previously so this guy was denied the ability to purchase ammo and was even denied the ability to go through the background check again because of ignorant clerks that have not been trained properly this is a confusing law i understand that uh, but it is something that 
needs to be trained better by the managers of these stores who are ammunition vendors. If you've applied for your vendor license or if you're an FFL, it's your job to know these things. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'll put a link to the video. Make sure you guys go over there, check out that video, leave a comment, let them know that I sent you over there and, uh, you know, show them some support because this guy did everything the right way and he got it on camera. So it's absolutely worth watching. Again, check the description box for that link. I want to thank him very much for sharing that story with me. So check out his channel. It's just an amazing video. Now, the next couple stories actually come from personal friends of mine. The first one is a woman who not only has a perfectly clean record, but also a perfectly clean conscience. She's worked for the church for a long time. She is one of those people that you know you can always depend on. You know, she's one of those people that we call good people, right? She's the type of person that you want to be friends with. She went to buy ammunition and she was denied ammunition because she hasn't bought a firearm in California. So she doesn't have that on record with the state. But the person behind the counter was not aware that there was an extended background even available, the one you would pay $19 for. And so since he didn't know that was available and didn't know how to conduct it, didn't even know where the buttons were, he couldn't do that. And since he couldn't do that, she was denied ammunition and had to leave without anything. So she was denied her Second Amendment rights again because of the ignorance of the clerk. Now, this next one is actually a guy who is... A uh, cop. He's active law enforcement right now. This guy's got a perfect criminal record. Again, goes through the background check with the proper identification and so forth and was denied a firearm. So we have members of our military. We have average Joes and we have law enforcement all being denied ammunition because these regulations are just completely overreaching. Now, to be honest with you, I could probably go through these stories all day, but they're going to start to sound the same. And that's because people are either getting denied with the proper documentation before the background check or they're getting denied after the background check and they're good, upstanding, law-abiding citizens. These are people who are being denied their Second Amendment rights. One thing I want you guys to remember, and this is very important, is that these denials are not going to go in vain. There are several lawsuits that are going to be coming down the pipeline from the CRPA, you have Gun Owners of America, Firearms Policy Coalition, and other groups that actually fight for for our rights, not just take your money and run with it. These are gun groups that we all need to support and they're gonna be fighting against these ammunition regulations, I guarantee it. Now with each of these stories, that gives them a little bit of ammo so to speak, no pun intended, a little bit of ammo to use in their arguments. If people are being denied their Second Amendment rights via this ammunition regulation and they have actual stories that they can reference, then again, that denial didn't go in vain. So if you guys have stories, if you guys have been denied for whatever reason, leave your story down in the comment section. Let people know about it. Let everybody know what you're going through and kind of share exactly what's going on. That comment section is there for everybody to talk and discuss. And uh, I, I think it's something that needs to be utilized. So again, if you have have a headache or horror story about your ammunition purchase that was denied for some reason, go ahead and leave that down below. Now, before I end this video, I just want to let you guys know if you're interested in supporting the channel, if you find what I do here valuable, I do have a Patreon page where you guys can head over and support the channel there. I do giveaways every single month. If you donate a dollar, you get one entry. If you donate two dollars, two entries, five dollars, five entries, and so forth. This month, I'm going to be giving away a couple magazines and a Phase 5 Weapon Systems 15-inch LPS and 15 handguard. So you guys can go over there, check that out, support the channel if you want. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you to all my current Patreons very much. Again, thank you to the Firearms Policy Coalition. Please like, subscribe. Have a great day.